Camila Pacheco is a multi-hyphenate artist with a journey centered in perseverance and heart to succeed. Her drive to invest in her craft regardless of challenges faced paved a way for her to live out the life she'd always dreamt of. Camila believes in fighting for your goals and not allowing circumstances to dictate your path. Listen as we discuss investing in yourself to pursue your creative goals, curating your portfolio and choosing the right platform to showcase your works, navigating through challenges and how to overcome them, how being true to yourself will lead you to discover your inner strength, and why Instagram likes don't always translate to art revenue, and how to identify moments to niche down and stay relevant. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etrolab.com. Hey, this is Jesse, and I'm an artist and studio host for Etcher Lab. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. So join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. Camila, thank you so much for joining me here on the podcast for Make More Art. I am thrilled to have you on because not only do I want to know about your background, but I kind of stalk you on Instagram, which I normally do for the people that I invite on the podcast. And I know that you are sort of the multi-hyphenate artist in the art world. You are, you do portraits, you do fashion illustration, you do this adorable animals on bicycles, you do buildings. And um, I know that you are also an artist for an animation studio. So it's like multi-hyphenate and there's just a lot of layers. So I want to know who is Camilla as an artist? Uh, thank you so much, Jesse, for having me. Um, so I will um, present myself a little very quick. I was born and raised in Sao Paulo, Brazil, but I live in Montreal for more or less 10 years. And uh, my journey, my, my love for art it started, it has a lot of ups and downs, but it started in a very early age. Mm -hmm. I would say that um, like seven, eight years old, wow. <laughs> like most of the uh, <laughs> 90s kids, I was very uh, in love with uh, cartoons and uh, anime on TV. And I watched it along with my sister. Um, uh -huh. She was my my best friend, and uh, she's still my best friend. But uh, she was my first student too. We draw together, <laughs> and yeah. And uh, after I did some manga courses uh, in my city, I fought a little with my mom because she didn't want me to to do manga. <laughs> Even though she invested a lot uh, in uh, my creativity, she put me on ballet, on piano classes, but uh, art, she was a little res resistant. <laughs> okay. Uh, but um, yeah, it was not very serious. I was just drawing for myself for fun. I didn't have a lot of friends that time in high school. So yeah, it was me, my drawings and my sister. But um, when it was the time to choose um, a college, I thought that uh, arts, art college would be the, the best fit for me. And um, I wasn't wrong. I wasn't wrong. Uh, it was uh, very good. I met all friends and we draw together. But um, I, I, I don't regret. The only thing I regret is that I expected that um, college would give me, uh, it would show me a career path other than being a high school art teacher. And it was nothing what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be an illustrator and uh, I want to draw. And uh, they didn't encourage that very much. I, mm -hmm. At that time I was not drawing very much. I was a little like stuck. And uh, at the same time, I was working in IBM with IT. Wow. I was, uh, <laughs> I was working there more to pay my art tuition too. Mm. It, was, uh, it was a good job because I could practice English and uh, after French. But um, I wasn't happy. So 
I was a little naive and I quit my, my stable job with, the, with this dream of being um, a fashion illustration uh, illustrator because I saw in the magazines and I thought that would be a viable career for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like uh, jumping from an airplane without parachute. <laughs> Can't imagine. <laughs> it was very frustrating. And uh, um, I was uh, 22 at that time. It was uh, 2010, more or less. And um, I was sending my portfolio for magazines and uh, applying for illustration jobs. And I didn't have any answers. But uh, it was in that time that I found the Flickr and the Behance. Mm. And uh, Behance has been a very important uh, platform for my career. Mm -hmm. I, I received uh, well, good jobs from, from Behance after. But uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was very sad that time. So I, I went back to my, my, my old job. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I went back there to work with IT again in, in Brazil. But uh, that time uh, I, I went to vacation to, to, to Paris um, to study French. And uh, uh, it was the first time that I bought a sketchbook and I was drawing the cafes. I was uh, like alone, uh, I was studying, so I met other people, but it was a very, very important experience for me because that, again, that made me think, uh, life is so much bigger. I can do much more things. I, I want to be a, a, a fashion, I want to be an illustrator. I want to be, I want to draw. So the, the seeds that I planted doing my, my portfolio, my Flickr, say they started to bloom. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a friend that, that uh, recommended me for a magazine that uh, she worked at uh, as an uh, art director because people saw that I was very, uh, I wanted that very much. So they, they also helped me and also I, the Flickr too, there was a, a small publisher in Brazil that uh, called me to do a, a cover. And uh, I had this bite that, uh, that that's what I want to do. That's what I want to, to be. So again, I quitted my, my, my job. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that time I quitted uh, and I, I decided to, to come to Montreal. And uh, it was a very big decision. Um, I I don't want to uh, tell it like it's a fairy tale. Everything is perfect because it was not. It was very, very hard. Um, but uh, there is a, a quote in a book that I like very much uh, and says that it's the, um, the possibility of making dreams come true that makes life uh, interesting. It's uh, the alchemist. And even with all this uh, difficult, I think it's worth. I work at, as a cashier, as a waitress here in, for a long time in Montreal, but always uh, focus on, uh, it was like a, a half-time job, so I could have more time to, to, to do freelance. And I started to do more and more um, important magazines i i was living here in montreal but i did i worked for glamour magazines Ma glamour magazine in brazil more or less for six months and then other magazines uh, here in canada in uh, chi china in mexico <laughs> and the, all with the, my hands portfolio because people found me there and the mm -hmm. I would say that uh, this uh, bad experience that I had when I, the first time that I quit my job, it was really, even though with all the that uh, depression that I had at the time, it was very important to at least start start my, my portfolio. And uh, yeah, I was uh, working and, and doing my, my uh, book covers on the side with uh, working as a waitress. 
but I was like, um, uh, I want to do full time as an artist. I studied uh, here in Montreal for digital art. It was it was a, a school more focused on uh, on the video games and animation. And uh, it was not very easy to study there because it's a very expensive school. So I had to save money and. Uh, but uh, it uh, uh, all this all this work was uh, it, yeah it, it was paid because I after I found a job in a animation studio and I've been working there for three years now and I'm very happy and I still do the the the, the editorial on the side. Thank you for sharing your story, Camilla, and I've gotten a lot of like really good takeaways from, from your journey. And thank you for pursuing art, first off. Thank you for pursuing, for persisting, and for not giving up. I, I know exactly how it feels when you really want to do something and it feels like some doors are closing and then, you know, doing something on the side, but then pursuing and hoping that another door will open. So that is really inspiring. And when you talked about, I mean, from the start, you said you didn't have a lot of, you didn't have a lot of friends and yet art has always been your companion. I mean, of course your sister, but art has been very influential in your life going through those phases. And when you, when you talked about having another job and to still, you know, be able to invest in your art, I think that's really important. It eventually led for you to, be a part of an organization where it will allow you to create and you know showcase your creativity and also what's interesting about that story is you found the platform which helped you immensely to showcase your art so Camila how how did you decide where your art will be seen by potential clients or by anyone uh in the beginning was Flickr Flicker. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I didn't uh, know anybody that was working in the in the domain, mm. but I was uh, I was Googling uh, like the, I didn't uh, have a lot of time. So I was uh, stalking of this artist and I <laughs> and also <laughs> I found some uh, uh, illustration books. And um, uh, I saw how this uh, how this uh, professional artists how they um, display their their work. So I was like uh, doing like oh I I want to be like this artist so like a uh, uh, Maga Hit Sauvage or something. So I was like ah uh, oh, she used this uh, platform she used this and. Uh, um, yeah, it was like following the other artist uh, mm -hmm. inspiring mm -hmm. that was in, uh, inspiring me, and uh, also I was like it was like a garden that I was uh, I, I put a a, a, pro a project, and uh, this project uh, was not very well, mm -hmm. but um, after I could uh, like uh, put more love on this <laughs> uh, or this one uh, it's not that good so. It's okay. I will delete it, and I will start an, uh, another project. And uh, after, uh, I think it was uh, Instagram uh, started being very strong. Yeah, I started my my Instagram. Uh, I was doing this uh, fashion illustration, like a, a street style, mm -hmm. and uh, I was doing one one per day. I wasn't having any any likes like <laughs> I was putting a, an illustration and the, I didn't have any answer any response mm. but uh, with this uh, drawing that I was doing daily I was uh, uploading to my my portfolio so it built uh, a, a project and uh, with this I could uh, cho I could choose like oh this one is uh, better than this one so I will I uh, will display this one, uh, mm. this, it was this drawing uh, more than the, the other. The, in Instagram, I didn't have any response, but uh, I, I wasn't demotivated either mm. because I was like, oh, it's okay. I, it doesn't matter. 
the the likes more important it doesn't matter much the platform the, the important is the, the the work also i i try a lot of things i try the um uh drawing and buildings i i like it a lot urban sketching too mm -hmm. uh i went back to, to brazil in 2015 i stayed there one year to wait for my visa that time too i could uh, uh, stood the watercolors with the, the teachers in Brazil, but uh, I was missing Montreal a lot. So I started uh, doing uh, Montreal houses <laughs> to, to, I don't know, to make me feel like uh, I want to go back there. Mm. And, okay. uh, uh, and I, when I came here back in 2016, um, I, I had a, a new portfolio. My portfolio was like filled with more, with different things. Yeah, I was actually meaning to ask, because normally for, for an artist, they would say that you need to focus on just one thing. Like initially you mentioned about fashion illustration and then characters or animals and bicycles as well. And then I saw that you did, you also have portraits. I, I saw this post of you with... Uh, 2017 to 2018, I think, if I'm not mistaken. What I love about you is, yeah, there, there were a lot of layers. But what can you say about, in terms of growing as an artist and developing your style, when they say that you need to focus on just one, not really subject, but let's say genre, when you mm -hmm. paint? Yeah, I think it's important to not spread yourself too thin and try all the types of softwares at the same time. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I, I, I saw that my that I started to grow when I focus 100% uh, in watercolor. Okay. And uh, but uh, then I saw that I could do new things. I, I, I tried new, I, I tried something new. Uh, I think that uh, in the in this industry is also very important to reinvent yourself and uh, and try new things there is mm -hmm. a moment that you need to focus That's, sorry my cat That's and a there is a moment <laughs> <laughs> and there is a moment that you uh, have to try and uh, and uh, to keep uh, to keep yourself uh, relevant because mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a industry that changes a lot Okay. And uh, um, if you, I, I think for me, for example, I always wanted to make money. I wanted to work. So I, I, when a, it's a client work, I do what the client wants. Uh, mm. And uh, but I, I when a like a, for me, I I do. I, sometimes the the client work inspires me as well. So I, oh. I want to, I, I, I do um, a background in my work and I want to uh, redo it in, on my style, like in watercolor. Mm -hmm. Like uh, what what I do on my on my job has nothing to do with, uh, I cannot say has nothing because it's uh, the, the perspective and the, it's, uh, it's uh, there, there's stuff that, uh, that helps, that helps, but uh, it's, it's completely different style. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, the, with, with the with studios and the, with the with this um, an animation, the, the the digital art is is is, uh, is important. And unfortunately, we cannot work with watercolor. I think watercolor for me is uh, also a, a way to to to. Uh, to relax and not to look and look on the computer and, mm. uh, and it's very good uh, I, I i think it's very good to do it for me for myself okay and do do uh, what i want in my imagination okay thanks camilla so you did mention not to spread yourself too thinly but at the same time grow continuously by trying out different things and looking at which um specific genre let's say within watercolor you are you really want to grow in and yeah i saw that i had much more like a, a response when i focus mm. when i 
on it on it okay another question that i have camila is in everything when i was listening to your story i was just amazed that the drive and the you know the motivation for you to continue drawing and uh, continue pursuing art is just very strong and that's very inspiring to hear you talk about your journey so i guess my question would be what what sort of what is the catalyst behind this motivation what what drives you to keep on going despite all those challenges that you mentioned i understand it's not you know it's not easy to have to work you know several jobs jobs that you you're not really you're not really passionate in doing and only with the purpose of doing more of art or supporting your art so what's your what's a driver what's where do you get the motivation to continue pursuing and not resort into just giving up mm-hmm. yeah I, i i don't want to be cheesy but uh, yeah. one thing that helped me a lot <laughs> is the self help books self help books okay yeah <laughs> and uh, also podcasts uh, with art uh, uh, like motivational uh, phrases that helped me a lot um and this one thing that have in common with all these books is that they say set setting goals is very important okay so there was a time here in montreal that i wasn't very happy and uh, i but uh, one thing that helped me a lot was writing down every day uh, what i want to be like uh, I want to be living here um, and I want to have a stable job with art and I also want to to grow and, as an artist. And uh, I don't know, it's a little cheesy, but it helped me. <laughs> it worked <laughs> with you. It worked for me. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you get the motivation, right? The, the, at the end of the day, it's really about you continuously pushing towards whatever it is that you want to go. And I love that you write every day. I think those affirmations are really helpful that this is really what I want to do. I want to live here. I want to have a viable career in art. And that is just fascinating and encouraging as well, especially if we have listeners who would really want to pursue art but are like thinking should I or shouldn't I. So that's that's really helpful, Camila. So when I was looking at your Instagram and you mentioned this earlier that you have been you have worked with magazines and uh because you ha- also have a friend who is an art director one of the magazines you mentioned several uh, magazines big ones and i did see i think that was a post from 2017 where any were featured in cnn travel um china oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah i saw that and i was like whoa that's amazing um <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more of that and what was the biggest probably milestone in your art journey by far yeah um i i was very very happy when i i had the 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 job for glamour brazil mm-hmm. because i grew i grew up uh, uh, reading these magazines okay <laughs> and uh, even though i was doing here in montreal for brazil and the uh, uh, This opportunity will make my portfolio stronger. True. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and after I had uh, much more small magazines and books, but uh, I think it's important also to say that uh, even though it's not like big as this one, it's important to treat uh, the same. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, I think our other uh, milestone that it was when I enter with on the on the animation studio for me i was uh, very very happy <laughs> uh, i had the different uh, different milestones in this career it's a lot of ups and downs <laughs> right yeah so for you the biggest one would be being a part of the animation studio right and uh, because i in brazil it's not very easy there there is animation wow. there in brazil, mm-hmm. but um I, I came here also because I thought that uh, it would be um, there is more opportunities. I wasn't wrong. Mm-hmm. 
mm. that uh, when you are an Im Im immigrant, uh, <laughs> you have to to really like to try different keys to open the doors. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you have to try different keys to open the door. <laughs> but uh, if you persist, they, they will open in the end. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy. I, I have a lot of good experience in my work. Yeah. When you are creating, because we talked about this earlier that you've done fashion illustration. I saw food as well. And you went to Paris, you were drawing cafes and you have, I saw a ton of buildings, both in ink and watercolor and uh, portraits as well. Your portraits are really good. And I was thinking to myself when I was looking at your portfolio, I was like, wow, this girl can really draw. She's really good at drawing. And uh, it's just amazing um, the, the different things that you can create with your hands. Um, Camilla, mm, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> which one is, would you say you are more drawn to creating? Because we talk about fashion, portraits, food, buildings, and then the animals on a bicycle, which are, like what I said, really adorable. Mm -hmm. So which of those are you more drawn into creating? Uh, I would say right now it's environments and uh, what I'm doing now uh, with the uh, isometric, I'm having a lot of fun right now mm -hmm. because I will be honest with you. Uh, I... I, I, I could draw, but I was very dependable of uh, photos. Ah. So I was doing, I was doing uh, portraits and I was doing uh, buildings, but I was tracing. I was tracing before drawing. Mm -hmm. I was tracing the photo. So uh, I was very insecure with, with, um, with the, my perspective, with the technical part of it, because I, I like painting but my drawing was not that uh, good. So right now I, I found this uh, isometric perspective that they are all uh, <laughs> parallel lines with the, the, the it's a, I, won't, I won't say that it's, it's easy because it's not very, it's not easy, but it's easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> when I, when I, <laughs> Yeah. When I saw it, I could like, oh yeah, I could, I can use uh, I can use my imagination more freely. I can mm. do a building that doesn't exist at all, and uh, my perspective won't be that bad. And uh, I'm I'm having a lot of fun doing this type of uh, a little environments that I can uh, use my imagination and I can combine all this. Uh, all this thing that I like drawing, uh, objects and uh, characters and, uh, mm -hmm. and buildings. <laughs> that's, that's great to hear. And thank you for being honest with that. I think we all have insecurities of our own. And it's just amazing to hear how you were able to outgrow that insecurities when it comes to drawing perspective. And you found your niche with the isometric drawing. So... Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, there was this quote that you posted on the gram, uh, which you said was from your grandmother, and that was, be yourself. I, and I, I brought that question up because you talk about insecurities earlier. And is, is that something that you still live by up until this day? Because what you've written on your caption was really, it struck a chord, um, I think, with, every, with anyone who saw that post. Uh, about just being yourself and not really paying attention that much to what everybody is saying. What do you want to expand on that? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very important quote for me because I I was uh, very insecure uh, growing up, uh, even in my in the college time in the mm. university when I was uh, to do my thesis and to explain to everybody what I want to do to be an illustrator, I started to choke. I was like, <gasps> I could not talk. I started crying because mm -hmm. I was very worried about what everybody in that room was thinking about me. If they were making fun of me, if mm -hmm. I was uh, ridiculous. 
and uh, I think uh, one thing that I uh, it made me happier it's uh, being myself and uh, even though if I am cheesy if I'm ridiculous I I am myself and <laughs> I just have to be myself. That, those are really good words from your grandmother and uh, I'm, I'm glad that you shared it with the world <laughs> because it, I think it's really important for us to own our identity and uh, yes. to really let our inner us shine um, without really feeling the need to be validated. Um, Camilla, I am enjoying our conversation and I know for the listeners that we have, they're also looking forward uh, seeing more of your works, which they get to see live on August 3rd. Um, I'm excited about this. Can you share us with us what you will be teaching on August 3rd for the live demo? Yes, yes. I will be doing um, like a, a isometric uh, environment. I will be painting uh, an illustration. And in the mini workshop, I will be enter more in the, in the details of the perspective. But uh, we are going to, to paint an illustrate, illustration together. And I'm looking forward to answer all these questions and talk to, <laughs> to the I audience. Do. Yes. I'm sure people will have a lot of questions. I have a thing or two in my mind right now based on what I've seen in your gram. But um, it's been an amazing time chatting with you, Camilla. So just to wrap everything up, um, I know you've shared a lot of things with us, with your journey, which, like what I said, are really um, very inspiring and very encouraging. But if you are to give, let's say, three major takeaways for our audience, especially for any budding artist who would want, who are maybe in a position that they are struggling, whether they would want to pursue art or not, what pieces of advice can you share with them? Um, yeah, I, I would say that it doesn't matter what other people say and think, If even though if you do other jobs to pay your bills, if you are an artist, you are an artist, you don't need to, to prove yourself to anybody. And uh, if you have a, a goal, um, it's important to write down, to remember yourself, what you want, wanna, where you want to go. Uh, it's okay to change your goals too. <laughs> it doesn't need to be uh, written on rock, but uh, if you write down on paper, if it's important for you, try to, remember, try to remind yourself that it's important. And that will make you uh, stronger to, to go further. Thank you, Camilla. Those are really good insights and words from you because a lot of people are easily swayed what other think. And of course, we have our own insecurities. But at the same time, the goal setting, like what you said, is really important. Service, I think, guide. And you also shared about it's okay to change the goal. It's not set on Okay, you said on rock. Camila, thank you so much for speaking with me. Like what I said, I'm excited about this because I met several artists and they're all amazing. And hearing another artist share their, their journey and being so vulnerable and honest about the ups and downs is just really inspiring. And I know I said inspiring several times in the episode, but you are inspiring. And thank you for continued doing art and sharing it with everyone. Um, and we look forward to seeing more of your works and your process for your live demo. And hopefully we will get to see more of that on your mini workshop. So Camila, thank you again. Sure. <laughs> thank you for being part of Make More Art, the podcast. And stay safe. Take care. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Talking to Camilla made me realize that opportunities are everywhere and challenges are part of the journey to strengthen us, to allow ourselves to discover what we truly value in life. So tell us, what challenges have you faced as an artist? How did you overcome them? And where do you draw the motivation to push through? Share with us your comments through the blog post associated with this podcast at etrolab.com slash Camilla. We would love to hear your thoughts, so please drop us a five-star review on the Apple Podcast, or you can find us on YouTube at Etra Studio. 
and oh, hitting the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you again next time. Until then, let's make more art.